Here we number five. It's basically this uh, big barrel that you have people lined up on the outside and it spins very fast. And then the floor underneath them will fall out and they'll get stuck to the wall because of the friction between their clothes and the wall. So I'm just going to start off by drawing the free body diagram. I'll draw it from the top view and I'll draw it from the side view. And you do need both to uh, get a, you know, a good picture of what's going on here. So for the top, it'll look like just a circle. The circle's going to be rotating. And I'm going to draw a person right outside here. Now, as this person will spin around, they'll get pushed up against this wall. And the wall will push against them with an normal force. So I'm going to call this F N. And they're going to have uh, an acceleration into the circle. I'll we'll call this A C. Just A C circle. And that's uh, pretty much it for the top, except that this is going to just have the radius, and it tells us the radius is 5.5 meters. And in the side view, it'll just be a wall with the person on there. And I'm going to draw a dotted line showing that this is the center of the circle. This is going to have the same radius. So to draw the forces against the person, we of course have gravity. It's going to be Fg. Then we have the friction that fights against gravity. Call this FF, and we have this normal force right there, FN. So now I'm just going to decide what's positive and what's negative. I'm going to say that into the circle, which based on these diagrams is going to be lift, but this is actually just into the circle. Um, it's going to be positive, and I'm going to say that up is going to be positive. And the reason I'm saying up is positive um, is just so this force of friction will be easier to deal with because it'll end up turning into a, a pretty long thing and it's um, just easier to deal with than it is possible. If you if it was negative you get the same answer, it'd just be a little bit more work. And so now I'm gonna draw my forces in Linux. Um, and the Y. So in the X we have just normal force. So I'll draw the fender. And then if you remember the flight is equal to M A. And these both always point in the same direction. So your normal force is going to be equal to your centripetal force. So FC is going to be equal to FN. And you know, the centripetal force basically just acts as if, like, you know, as if it's an FN. So it's just saying your net forces are equal to FN because FN is the only force around that acts um, into the circle. So on the Y, you have force of friction which is going to be positive, and you're going to have gravity, which is going to be negative. And this acceleration is going to be zero, because um, it wants us to find the friction that stops you from sliding down the wall, which means we have to find the point where you don't slide down the wall, which is when the acceleration is zero. So you'll get force of friction minus force of gravity is equal to zero. So we just add force of gravity to one side, you'll get force of friction is equal to force of gravity. Now if you remember the force of friction is equal to mu fn and force of gravity is equal to mg. And this is the mu you're finding, so you can divide the fn to both sides and you'll get mu is equal to mg over fn. Now we don't know fn and we know mg, so to find fn we can go back here to the sex. And I'm just going to drag it down here because this requires quite a bit of room. So, we know that centripetal force is equal to Fn. Well, centripetal force is equal to mv squared over r. And here, v is equal to 2 pi r over t. And so, we can sum this thing into there. And we'll get F. I'm drawing it over here again. Um, it'll be Fn is equal to. I'm going to pull the m over here out. Um, what I'm doing is just pulling this out and then multiplying by v. And it'll be v is going to be 2 pi r over t. And this is going to be the whole quantity squared. So the normal force will be m over r times 4 pi squared r squared over d squared. One of these r's will cancel. You'll be left with r there. 
So your normal force will be equal to 4 pi squared m uh, mr over t squared, which is just a really big, long, you know, an ugly thing. This can't be simplified any more. So we can now plug this whole thing in for this type n down here. And then we're just going to draw this up here. So we'll get mu is equal to, it'll be mg, because mg over 1 times, uh, it'll be 1 over this whole long thing, it'll be 4 pi squared mr over t squared. Now this max will end up cancelled. So we'll be left with mu is equal to, this t ends up going to the top, and then it'll be multiplied by this gravity, so it'll be t squared g over 4 pi squared r. And that is your equation, but we're not quite done yet, because we have to do one conversion. It tells us that it's rotated at 33 revolutions per minute. And this t is period where it's in seconds per revolution. So we have to convert first from revolutions per minute to revolutions per second, and then from revolutions per second to seconds per revolution. So I'm just gonna make myself a little row here to do this conversion. And so it tells us that frequency is equal to 33 revolutions per minute. We can multiply this by one minute over 60 seconds, which is just one over one. And we'll get a frequency of 0.55 uh, revolutions per second. And period is equal to one over frequency. So it'll be one over 0.55. Uh, revolutions per second, and we'll get a period is equal to 1.82 seconds per revolution. So now, when you plug this t in here, and make sure to square it, g is going to be 9.8. Um, 4 pi is just a constant, and r is going to be 5.5. So now you have everything you need to solve, and you can get the right answer. Thank you for watching.